Okay, so hi guys and welcome back. My goal for the build which I want to show you today was to assemble the smallest and most lightweight quadcopter possible, which still supports 4 inch props and uses only off the shelf budget components. Additionally, I wanted it to be able to carry my Runcam 2 in order to create beautiful full HD videos at 60 frames per second. This was quite a challenge and today I want to show you the build and of course how it flies. After researching for some time I decided to go with the Diaton Grasshopper as a frame for this build. This is a very small 160 size frame which still supports 4 inch props. Its bottom plate is 2.5 mm strong, which is sufficient given the low weight which I planned to build it up to. The bare frame is also only 28 grams heavy, which is awesome. So let's start the build. As always, I will have all the parts linked uh, in the video description, so check it out if you like. Here you can see the first step of it. I am using the very lightweight 1306 motors with 3100 kV together with my DUS XM20 ESCs. I have cut the motor wires short and soldered them directly to the ESCs. Here I am using a little trick which works pretty well. At the ESC side I do not desolder the existing wires but simply cut them off at the origin and then solder the motor wires directly on top of the old solder points. This way I only have to get my solder iron close to the ESC once, which lowers the risk of potential damage from the hot solder iron. You can also see the very small and lightweight diaton PDP here at the center. I like it for its low weight and nice layout. They have been working great so far. The ESC wires are already soldered as well as the power connector. Both the 5 volt and 12 volt outputs are pre tinned already and thus we can continue with step 2, the flight controller. Let's start from the top here. Here you can see the buzzer connected already and on the left of it you can see two more wires. They go to the battery voltage sensor of the NACE and are not connected to the battery yet that comes a bit later. That way the NACE knows the voltage of the battery and can react to it, for example to turn on the buzzer if the battery is low. On the right side we see our cheap FreeSky AC401 receiver connected to the NACE. That receiver is still pretty new and very cheap, it's about 10 USD or so. It is full range. I like to use them on flying machines which I keep close by. For everything else I use the original FreeSky receivers. That receiver is connected to the minus and plus for powering the receiver and of course to the PPM pad of the NACE so that the NACE can receive its uh, instructions. On the bottom from left to right the four ESCs are connected so that the NACE can steer the motors. Additionally, we use the plus and minus connector of motor 6 to supply the NACE with 5 volts from the PDP below it. Next comes the receiver. This is simply put on top of the NACE separated by standoffs. I have 3D printed a little platform for it, but you can just use any old plastic card or something similar as a platform if you do not have access to a 3D printer. Finally, there is the video transmitter here on top. Notable here is that I have detached the SMA connector from it. I have simply cut it away using a strong cutter and directly soldered a lightweight clover leaf antenna to it. Here we can also see some photos of the completed setup so far. Note that I try to put everything between the bottom plate and the top plate in order to have the top plate completely empty. The reason for this is that I want to uh, optionally put a run cam 2 there for recording. That means of course that I had to use longer standoffs for the upper plate to, to fit everything in. Here you can already see the mini camera mounted to the frame and connected to the, to the VTX which supplies it with 5 volts of power. The camera holder is simply glued to the frame here. 
here you can see the last part of the of the wiring. As you can see, I'm using the a balance plug to also use the balance connector of the battery for power. The balance connector is connected to the voltage sensor of the NACE, the power input of the video transmitter, and additionally to the RunCam2 USB cable, which you see on top. That allows me to directly power the RunCam2 from the flight battery, which saves weight, of course, uh, because I do not need a separate battery for the RunCam2 that way. You can also see the regular 4045 pull nose props in the picture, and also the buzzer, which is already glued in place. And here we are. We arrive at only 156 gram for the complete 4 inch prop. Uh, quadcopter, including FPV and including the RunCam USB connector. I believe that's a pretty great weight and it will definitely allow for very long flight times, which we will take a look at in just a minute. Just as a comparison, here is the empty weight for my ZMR180, which was already a very lightweight build, as you can see in the referenced video. And well, it's around 70 grams more lightweight than that, which is pretty awesome. And now it's time to go flying. <laughs> For this flight I wanted to uh, casually fly it around, not only hovering, really flying, in order to assess the battery runtime in real life of the 850 mAh 3S LiPo which I am using. You can see a time lapse of this flight including a time counter at the upper right. And well, so you can see it running right now. So that was pretty impressive, right? Well, at least I was impressed. More than 11 minutes of flight time on this little guy, after which I had still 10.9 volts left in the battery. Of course, these 10.9 volts were measured without any load on the battery, but still, I could have probably flown it for a few more minutes if I would have really tried to stress the battery, which is pretty amazing for such a small quadcopter. It's, well, it's just what I wanted. It's awesome. Okay guys, so here you can see the little grasshopper in full combat configuration. Uh, well, no, that sounds wrong. Let's say ready to rumble. You can see the round cam 2 on top here without any battery. We have the clover leaf antenna installed with the uh, video transmitter here. So you know that all from the uh, previous uh, parts of this video. Here we have the little motors with our 4045 bull nose props here, which works really well. And on the bottom here, Oh, I have the little 850 mAh 3S LiPo and that works really well because probably because it also has a quite a low center of gravity and everything is quite centered here also with regards to, to, to gravity. The run cam doesn't have much weight because it's on without the battery and that holds really well here. So I never had the problem of that coming loose even if it's just mounted here on top of this piece of foam that works really well. Let's take a look at the other side of it here and you can see my balance connector here which supplies video transmitter and so on as I told already and here the buzzer. So now let's see what the weight is on this full ready to rumble configuration and you can see we arrive at a weight of 270 grams and this is pretty awesome for a for a quadcopter with a long flight time, 4 inch props and a full HD capability at uh, full HD recording capability at 60 frames per second. So that's pretty neat. Let's say we don't need the run cam. Just remove it here. So without the run cam and its foam and so on, we arrive at only 233 grams which is great as well. So we are even below 250 grams here. 
and if we say okay we don't use the heavy batteries here the 850 milliamperes lipo but go for one of the smaller lipos like that one that's a 500 milliamperes lipo let's take a look at this we'll just remove that big guy here and say we have here uh, the copter which is only 156 grams then let's put the 500 milliamperes lipo here which adds a few more grams so we are <laughs> still at below 200 grams and I bet it would have a great flight time with that alone because it's so lightweight and if we add the run cam to this let's just put it here on top we arrive at the weight even including the foam and so on we can put it here if we want well, it, it doesn't have any weight anyways even with the foam we arrive at the weight of well below 250 grams for a, a quadcopter with 4 inch props which has full FPV capabilities and can record a full HD at 60 frames per second and I bet if I, if I take a bit of a, of a larger battery maybe 600 milliamperes you will still stay below uh, 250 grams and still get quite decent flight times but now let's go for some more flying with the run cam mounted so that should be even better enjoy So while you watch the reminder of the Run Cam 2 video, I guess that concludes this video. I'm really, really happy with this build. I now have a very compact quadcopter, only 160 size, which I can take everywhere, which can even carry my Run Cam 2 and which has an amazing flight time. So that's awesome. I really like it. Hope you liked it too, and if you did, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm really looking forward to see you next time.